Hey guys, welcome back to Mark Moments on Title Tuesdays. Thanks for all the feedback. And today we're gonna to be discussing the closing disclosure. In order to properly discuss the closing disclosure, we have to divide it into three parts. The buyer's closing disclosure from the lender, the seller's closing disclosure that we prepare in order for the seller to sign and the lender needs that as well. And then of course the Alta form, which will replace all of these will replace the HUD uh, for a cash transaction. We're gonna start with the buyer's lender's disclosure. We have our wonderful clients, Billy Buyer and Sally Seller. And the thing to remember first and foremost is that this disclosure is prepared for by the bank. However, we have to work with the bank in order to have final figures that match for all of our uh, closings. Um, the closing disclosure, if you recall, replaces not only the HUD, but it replaces the original till and it combines the loan estimate, the till, the HUD figures all in one closing disclosure for the buyer. The lender has to disclose to the client within um, three business days before the closing pursuant to TRID. And they actually are these days after a year of doing this are trying to disclose even earlier. They don't necessarily have to have final figures three days before the closing as we had hoped but they do need to disclose figures and um, then we can fine tune them if we have to with some lenders prior to closing. Remember, they have to balance and we have to balance for the cash that the buyer has to bring into closing. All of the charges have to match. The buyer will be signing the CD, the closing disclosure prepared by the lender. However, in this case, I have one that we also prepare as well. We don't give it to the buyer, but we have to match as I told you and it duplicates the same things that are on the buyer's CD. You'll see underneath as I go along um, the different categories to pay attention to, and if you are a realtor, of course, where your commissions are gonna be shown. The first and foremost easy stuff on the closing disclosure is the loan amount and the purchase price. In this case, you have a purchase price of 146,000 and we have a loan amount of 110,000. It shows interest rate, principal, um, and interest for their payment. And in this case, this particular buyer is not doing escrow for their taxes and insurance, to keep it simple. It shows at the bottom of the first page that their cash to close is 41,182.23. And as you'll see by the examples, you can follow along. Page two is very similar to the old page two of the HUD. It is the breakdown of charges. It has all of the lender charges, it has the lender and title charges. It has the recording charges. Then after the recording charges, it has collecting for insurance and it has the prepaid interest. In this case, again, we're not doing escrow, so it's not escrowing any taxes and insurance going forward for the next year. And the last section, H, that's just the catch-all section, similar to the 1300 on the HUD. It's very easy to read once you start reading them and you're that busy with this CD. Remember also, the columns are labeled borrower paid at closing and before closing, seller paid at closing and before closing, and then the last column on the CD on page two says paid by others. What is that for? Many times you'll see that the lender will give a lender credit and we have to put it somewhere. So that's what that column is for, something paid by somebody else pursuant to the transaction. On a buyer CD prepared by the lender, you're not gonna see figures on the seller side for the most part because they're just dealing with buyer figures. Remember, when the changes happened last year, the idea was that certain things should be more confidential to either party. Uh, the, le the seller does not need to know necessarily the interest rate for the buyer's mortgage. So they have divided them up accordingly. So when we present to the buyer, this buyer CD, we're presenting the lenders prepared buyer CD of which we balance. Getting back to section H, so we don't forget, in here are all of the charges um, that you would normally see in section 13. And of course, if you're a realtor, this is where your commission is, the most important part. And also your processing fees, the most important part for you to get paid at the table. Um, we have the, the columns add up at the bottom, and then we move on to page three. And we read this like a book. The old HUD, remember, we always read backwards. We always read from page two back to page one. 
the new CDs we read like a book. Then we come to page three and we have our purchase price and our prorations of our credits for pluses and minuses on either side of whatever they may be. And we come down to section L of a total amount of money that is needed in order to um, purchase the property. And then we start subtracting. We subtract the deposit, we subtract the loan amount, and of course we subtract the proration for the tax credit from the seller to the buyer to the day of closing, no differently than page one was of the HUD, which brings us again back to the cash, cash to close, and in this case it's 41,182.23. The additional pages that are in the CD are reminiscent of the till, loan estimates, disclosure information, and then of course the last page is everybody involved in the transaction and the realtors, the loan officer, our company, and where the buyer signs. The buyer must sign and date. And again, the buyer must sign and date the, the bank prepared CD that is in the bank package that we receive for closing. We're gonna move on to the next section. Now we have the seller CD. The seller CD, closing disclosure, is not prepared by the bank. It is prepared by your title office independence title and we rem remember we have to submit certain things to the buyer's lender because they want to make sure they're accurate they do some lenders do request a copy of the seller CD prior to funding not exactly sure why but they do um, buyers lenders want a copy of the warranty deed sometimes as funding conditions so we have to have these things completed the seller CD the closing disclosure for the seller of course is only two pages versus five and it has a lot less information. Why does it have a lot less information? Because it doesn't have any of the buyer charges. Because again, the bank feels, since the new TRID and CFPB guidelines of last year, that the seller's not entitled to much of the information that's on the buyer side. If you've been doing this a long time, you can remember way back when, prior to 2005 even, there used to be a time with cash or loan closings that you could print out a buyer side HUD and a seller side HUD. It's very similar to those days, but these are called closing disclosures or CDs. They are not the HUD. And there's a reason for that. These are just disclosures. The um, next document that we'll talk about the Alta form is actually for funding purposes. This buyer's, the, um, buyer's CD that we spoke about in the previous segment is only signed by the buyer and only the buyer and the bank get a copy. The seller CD that we're reviewing now is only signed by the seller and the seller and the bank only get a copy. Agents or other parties to the transaction are not entitled to either one of these documents. You must remember that and we'll get to the Alta form in the next segment. So in the seller CD, it again has one page and two, must be signed by the seller and dated and as you'll see, it also has a column, but it only has the seller column, and it just has their charges. On page one of the seller CD is strictly their portions of the prorations back and forth for taxes or homeowners association or whatever may be prorated if there's rent or etc. It's a very simple document. It can be um, very easy for a seller to sign. They don't have to sign an original. They have to sign at least a copy and scan it back to us in case they're not there or they made changes or anything else. They don't have to have an original of the seller CD, but it does have to be signed and dated. So next coming up, stay tuned for one more portion of this that is really important to pull it all together, especially if you're a realtor. Now, we talked about the buyer CD prepared by the bank and we balance with the bank. We've talked about the seller CD prepared by us as their title company and given to the bank upon funding, uh, for funding rather, for the transaction. But remember, there is one more document that must be signed when there is a lender uh, closing going on, and it's called the Alta Settlement Statement. What is the Alta Settlement Statement form? It's basically an old-fashioned HUD. It's a plus and minus of debits and credits on either side in more layperson language for you to follow along. It does not have interest rates for the buyer, principal and interest payments for the buyer. It doesn't have some of that more um, uh, discrete information that may not be relevant to the seller or the agents involved in the transaction. This document, however, is very important for you. Why? 
If you're an agent, this is what you get. You don't get a signed seller or buyer CD. You're not entitled to that. You are entitled to a document from the transaction, and this is the document. You get it fully signed by both buyer and seller. This is the same document that a buyer or seller uses when they have to get into their complex or when they have to go to the utility department. This is the document. For all realtors, this is the document that must be attached to your commission checks. And this is the document that you keep on log showing that the transaction was consummated. This is a very important document. It's very simple. It's not anything extra we have to do. When we create the buyer and seller CD, this is automatically created. But there is a difference. And for those that think there isn't a difference, please understand that there is. And please note that you're not entitled to the buyer CD or the seller CD, you are only entitled to the Alta form. As you'll see along, the Alta form has the same information, the addresses, the buyer and seller, and even loan amounts, and it has a column for seller on the left, debit and credit, and borrower on the right, debit and credit. And as you follow along, it has all the same charges. The Depending on the font, depending on how many buyers or sellers, the Alta form could be anywhere from three pages to five pages, just simply by how, many, uh, how much information is on the CD. So that don't get caught up in, it has to be two or three pages like the old way, no. It could be four, five, six pages, depending on how much information is, because it just pushes the paper down further, the font changes, and you could have a six page document for real, and it's totally normal. Page two, in this case, of the three page Alta form, again, has the pluses and minuses of debits and credits rather of each side, buyer and seller, again, giving the cash to close to the seller and the cash to bring in from the buyer. And the last page in this case for Billy Buyer and Sally Seller to sign. And of course, all Alta forms or uh, in, when they're consummated by the buyer and the seller should also be signed by us, Independence Title, when we complete the transaction so that you can use that and move forward. These are not, there's not necessary to have an original one of these. People will tell you, people that have been doing this for many years will say, I always like an original one of these documents. It's great. And I'm not saying we can't necessarily have one, but times have changed. And there is no law nor statute that requires an original one of these. However, we can get you one if we need to. Most of the time you're going to get a copy. So prepare yourself accordingly. A little shift and change modern times, PDF versions, etc. Remember also, this document does not go to the lender. This document is separate from the CDs that are required by the lender. Why? This document is state of Florida. This document is lender driven. Two different reasons, but we do not, 99.9% .9 of the time, ever send this back to the lender. Once in a blue moon, there is a lender that requires it as well. 99.9% .9 of the time, they never see this document. So this document again goes to the buyer and seller, their agents, and then the buyer and seller can use this document for their insurance company when we send out insurance, when they have to pay their utility bill, set up their account or close their account, and sometimes for the homeowners association when they're moving from the closing table to the property and maybe the guard doesn't have them on record yet, they can show this to them as well if needed, in addition to, of course, their deed at that time. So just want to sum it up for you. Closing disclosures are divided into two parts. The buyer closing disclosure that is prepared by the bank and verified with our office and the seller closing disclosure, which we prepare for the transaction. And then, of course, the Alta form, the Alta settlement statement form that we prepare for the transaction. We hope that you enjoy all of the Mark Moments and Title Tuesday topics. Please keep with your feedback and let us know what else you'd like to see. Don't forget to subscribe below and have a great day.